Hey guys, in the last video, part two, we ran a wire from fuse six over and out to go to our computer and coolant switches for our outlets. And we ran a wire to our C1 contactor at pin 12 and pin 9. And then through the contact at pin 5 to go over to our 48 volt transformer. And pin 8 to go to our tri power power supply. And then we completed our neutral and our ground wires as well. We can now start working on fuse 1. And we want to bring power to contactor 2. A normally open set of contacts. Uh, this will be wire number 140. And this will supply power to our line filter and to our VFD. Now this is the C2 contactor, the big contactor. And we're going to bring power in L1 and out through L2. We have three sets of contacts here. And then over here, these gray connectors, that is our power to our coil for C2. So we're going to come out of our fuse 1 using 14 gauge here. Coming out of fuse one, we want to go to L1. on our contact. Like so. Coming out of fuse one and going over to our contactor C2 on terminal L1. right here and then we want to come out of C2 and over to our line filter come out on terminal 1 come out on terminal 1 that is wire 142 That's going to go my line filter. Okay. We use a crimp on for that, or we can solder it. That connection. I think I may just solder that connection. Okay, so I pulled up the line filter and soldered all my connections and put some heat shrink on there. Uh, you can use crimp ons, however, I didn't have enough room to use the crimp ons because I I, I could have slid everything over, I guess. Uh, if you're doing this and following along, you might want to leave a little bit more space here. Or you can just do like I did and solder it on. A soldered connection, I think, is better anyways. But, in the future, you may have to replace a line filter. And if you do, then you'll just have to work around that. So we've got our power coming from C2 contactor and going over to our line filter. Here, and this is labeled P. And then we have a ground wire that I've got going over to the ground terminal. And then we have our neutral wire, and it's going to come down to our terminal block on our neutral.
like so and then that's pretty much it for power feeding the line filter and then I went ahead and soldered my connections on the load side and this is labeled P and N for neutral and these uh, go over to my VFD and the VFD is labeled L1 here we have L1 for a line and L3 or N for a neutral and we have power going to our VFD and after we connect to our ground terminal I also ran a wire with a crimp connector over to this stud that's on the cabinet to complete this ground. Now the, the back plate is grounded by the bolts that hold it to the enclosure and so this just kind of ties everything together. Okay so we finished up wiring up our line filter and I was going to use the crimp on type connectors and you may want to because they do have the blades on this particular filter however as you can see I'm space is pretty tight uh, I probably would have been better off just moving this stuff over and leaving a lot of room I don't know exactly what I was thinking but if you guys are using the same some or similar layout move this over and give yourself a little space and then you can uh, just use crimp on connectors I wanted to take a minute and talk about the VFD and the EMI filter I've gotten several questions uh, in my G0602 project as well as this project and, and sometimes I just get random questions uh, from individuals that are having issues with their system, with noise, or erratic behavior. If you have a VFD, you have to have a filter on the incoming power. If not, it's going to cause you issues. VFDs will generate electromagnetic interference and when they do what happens is this interference goes out to the motor comes back through the ground circuit and tries to find the source of the interference which is your VFD and what happens is that bleeds upstream to all the other components in the system and it can cause you problems so if you've got a VFD, pick yourself up one of these EMI filters. Now EMI stands for Electromagnetic Interference. And there's two types of inter interference. There's also Radio Frequency Interference. And the difference between, they're, they're basically the same thing. The difference between the two is uh, Radio Frequency Interference is... 0.5 megahertz to 1.7 megahertz and then electromagnetic interference is from 1.7 megahertz to 30 megahertz you've probably heard this if you've got a radio playing in your shop and you're running a machinery and you can get some static now what the filter does is it filters out the incoming power and then when the VFD generates the EMI and it tries to come back to the source which is the VFD the EMI filter prevents this noise from getting back into your system uh, and getting, back in, getting to your power supplies and your electronics you can pick these up they're very inexpensive um, this is a 20 amp because my VFD is a 15 amp rated at 15 amps I think I should be good. Most of your AC to DC power supplies have internal filters. 
so you don't really need to worry about those uh, I'm not sure about my transformer but I'm pretty sure it's going to be okay if you've got any kind of noise interference or weird things happening uh, your tachometer jumping around or any of that kind of stuff install yourself an EMI filter so in this video we connected from fuse 1 over to our contactor C2 at L1 through our contactor at T2 and over to our line filter we also connected our neutral and our ground to our line filter and we also brought those over to our VFD as well as the power to our VFD okay so that takes care of FU1 fuse to power our VFD in our next video we will wire fuse 3 and that goes to our control panel and out to all our switches for our control circuit so we'll get this thing wired up in the next video so stay tuned for that thumbs up if you like the video thanks for watching please subscribe and most importantly be safe